heard about the reported reduction in prices of goods in the markets. I suspect the approach of Christmas has something to do with these price reductions. But I'm happy to go along with the suggestion that they are meant to demonstrate confidence in the incoming government. I'm in full support of any measure that cheers up the long-suffering people of Ghana. I need a happy and confident people to tackle the huge problems that we face. And I need a confident, imaginative, and hardworking business community to create the prosperous Ghana we dream of. The MPP's vision for Ghana is to build a fair and prosperous society in a democratic, united nation. To achieve this, we need a well-educated and skilled population, an efficient public service with strong institutions, and a competitive economy that is capable of producing sustainable growth, jobs, and shared benefits for all. We've laid out our plans in our manifesto, which we call Change, an Agenda for Jobs, which I'm sure you have all read from cover to cover. But bear with me, though, as I pick out some parts just for emphasis. We aim to build the most business-friendly and people-friendly economy in Africa, which will create jobs and prosperity for all Ghanaians. And this we intend to do through private sector empowerment. And I repeat, private sector empowerment. <laughs> Government's role is to create this atmosphere for the private sector to flourish. We aim to achieve double-digit GDP growth annually for the next four years. And this is possible if you remember that under the Kufo-led MPP government, the economy attained a GDP growth rate of 9.1% in 2008 without oil. We will reduce the cost of doing business, maintain fiscal discipline, reduce government borrowing, and reduce interest rates to spur private sector investment. Our economic program will enhance agricultural production and productivity, along with the transformation of the economy through value addition to our raw materials in a process of rapid industrialization. The NPP will invest in our people through the provision of quality education and health care, as well as affordable housing. The role of government will be one of providing an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive as well as putting in place social policies to protect the disadvantaged and vulnerable in society. In particular, the MPP will implement policies to invest in rural, coastal, zongo, and inner city communities. <laughs> to attain a competitive economy, that is capable of producing sustainable growth, jobs and shared benefits for all. Two key stakeholders must play their roles. First, the government, by setting the environment and climate to allow private sector to flourish. And secondly, the private sector, to have the confidence to exploit all the opportunities offered by such a business-friendly environment. Once it's in government, our priority is to do all we can to give you the confidence of a positive business environment, devoid of arbitrary and irrational policy initiatives, and one that gives you the confidence to do what you should do best, invest in the numerous opportunities to create jobs and prosperity. To achieve our objectives, our principal economic policy direction will be to restore macroeconomic stability, shift the focus of economic management from taxation to production, manage the economy competently, 
and make the machinery of government work to deliver the benefits of progress to Ghanaians. The NPP will restore and maintain macroeconomic stability through the pursuit of sound policies on the basis of an in-house institutional framework. Macroeconomic stability is built around three pillars, monetary discipline, fiscal discipline, and financial stability. To restore monetary, to reinforce monetary discipline, the Bank of Ghana Act, 2000 612, established the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, to guide the implementation of monetary policy. The other two pillars, fiscal discipline and financial stability, have no such institutional anchors. Fiscal indiscipline has been the bane of economic management in the country. To address this, the IMF recently insisted on the passage of a public financial management act. However, the law as enacted is woefully inadequate because it lacks the key elements that will protect the public purse from abuse.